Before history began, salmon were here. Before there were men to watch and catch and wonder at them, wave after wave of salmon were ascending these wild Alaskan rivers to spawn, to plant their eggs in the ancient gravel beds. Before Alaska had a name, these maritime wanderers knew it was home. In a sense, salmon are conductors of energy. They are part of the circuitry, a perfectly wired system of plants and animals, predators and prey. One moment, energy flows in the form of a salmon pushing upstream. In a flash, the fish is caught and consumed, and that same energy pulses through the powerful grizzly bear. But salmon and bear are not quite rivals. They have come of age together, components of the same natural system. Today in Alaska, nature still works the way it was designed. Thousands of rivers, billions of salmon, and people are a part of it too. Alaska salmon not only are an integral part of the ecosystem, but also support a healthy, sustainable fishery. That fishery is a model of careful management for the world. Salmon need cold, clear streams, highly charged with oxygen, rolling down over the rocks. They survive only where the habitat is healthy and whole. The salmon depends on everything. Everything depends on the salmon. To reach their ancestral spawning grounds, Alaska salmon may hurl themselves hundreds of miles upriver. On the longest runs, they travel more than 2,000 miles inland. And they accomplish these feats relying entirely on energy reserves from food consumed at sea. Once they enter the river, they eat nothing at all. Typically, salmon return to the spot where their lives began. The same river, the same feeder stream, perhaps even the same patch of spawning gravel. How they navigate so unerringly is a puzzle that science has not fully solved. Spawning is the final fatal act in the life of an Alaska salmon. After spending two to four years at sea, the fish come back closing the circuit in this genetic gesture to the future of the species. The eggs they deposit will incubate in winter's long darkness and hatch with the coming of spring. Apart from their eggs, the salmon leave another legacy. The energy packaged in flesh and bone is seized by scavenging bears who need it to see them through the bitter cold months of hibernation. Many eagles also depend on this leftover feast before the country ices over and they leave for easier latitudes. And so the old, old system is sustained and renewed. Here in these Alaskan headwaters, you could not tell by looking, no matter how closely, whether the time was today or 20 centuries ago. In spring, the tiny new salmon called fry face a life filled with danger. They school in the shallows, seeking cover near undercut banks. The arctic tern and dozens of other bird species depend on the fry for part of their diet. Arctic char, lurking like trolls, fatten on luckless young salmon. Only a few of the thronging fry, perhaps one in a thousand, 
will make it to maturity. But far more eggs are produced than ever could become adult salmon. The system is so arranged that not only are there enough survivors to ensure the future of the species, but there are plenty left over for other uses. Like birds and bears, the native peoples of Alaska have relied on salmon since the farthest reaches of memory and myth. For most, salmon have been a mainstay. Fish caught in their upstream runs are dried on racks for year-round use. To many native peoples today, subsistence fishing for salmon is still vital. The law allows Alaskans an abundant share of salmon, protecting this traditional way of life. After spawning is assured and other needs are filled, there is still a share of the bounty for Alaska's historic commercial fishery. It has prospered since the days of sail and oar and leaky oilcloth coats. Today's Alaska commercial fishermen have inherited a long and colorful seafaring tradition. Thanks to wise scientific management, Alaska's modern commercial fishery harvests clean, nutritious wild salmon for far-flung markets without diminishing the resource it depends on. In fact, it is written into the Alaska Constitution that the state's fisheries must be managed for sustained yield. In four decades of Alaska's statehood, its fishery strategy has fulfilled this mandate and more. Salmon production has increased dramatically during this period to the near peak levels of today. To sustain the salmon, fishing methods and gear are closely regulated. Alaska rules permit three different kinds of fishing. Trolling is used in offshore waters. Trollers are the first boats to encounter salmon each year before they move toward their spawning rivers. The technique is simply to fan out several lines behind the moving boat, each with a baited hook or flashy artificial lure. Salmon caught by trollers are bright and firm, in full vigor. Pound for pound, they are the most valuable of all Alaska salmon. Most go into the fresh, frozen, or smoked fish market. A second method, purse seining, is done from larger boats. A circular net, or purse seine, is set around a school of salmon. The net is then drawn closed at the bottom, like a huge string bag, capturing the fish. Gill netting, the third method, comes into play as salmon are leaving the ocean behind and making their way to a river mouth. A net is deployed from a boat to intercept the incoming schools. Salmon swim part way through the mesh and become entangled. Net and mesh sizes are closely regulated. Brailer bags, commonly used, are filled with salmon in the net boat and then unloaded onto a tender vessel for transfer to shore. This reduces handling and helps ensure a high quality product. Restrictions on gear virtually eliminate any incidental catch of marine mammals or birds, and few, if any, non-target fish are caught. Salmon school very tightly and seldom mix with other species. How salmon are caught is only one part of wise management. Where and when are just as important. In most cases, fishing is not allowed farther than three miles from shore. Only when fish approach their native rivers is it possible to determine which stock of salmon is being caught. Seasons are kept short. Gill netters can fish only a few days per year and sometimes only a few hours per day. 
The season coincides with the return of salmon to their spawning streams. But before fishing is opened, state biologists make sure ample numbers have already passed upstream to lay eggs. On major rivers, state fishery workers stationed in towers above the water count individual salmon as they swarm up current. The fish show up clearly as they pass over a light-colored panel on the riverbed. When biologists ascertain that the quota for a particular run has moved past the tower, word goes out by radio to boats waiting beyond the river mouth. Fishing is open for the next few hours. The department will open the Naknak River Special Harvest Area to drift gillnet gear tomorrow from 12 noon until 4 p.m., a four-hour period. And so, in-season harvest decisions are made on each local river by personnel who know the fishery best. Salmon are vital to the livelihood of countless Alaskans. Often, fishing is a family enterprise. This family fishes by set netting, in which one end of a gill net is secured on shore and the net is tended from a small boat. Most Alaska salmon are processed in the state's own coastal communities. The packaged fish, whether fresh, frozen, or canned, are flavorful and free of contaminants. Salmon from Alaska are wild fish, spawned in the cold, clear, pure waters of wilderness streams. They grow to maturity in the North Pacific on a natural diet of shrimp, herring, squid, and plankton. Alaska salmon are incomparably safe and delicious to eat, coming from some of the cleanest waters on the planet. Tests by the EPA and other federal and state agencies demonstrate that levels of pesticides, heavy metals, petroleum, PCBs, and bacteria in Alaskan fishes are extremely low. In fact, no consumption advisories for contaminants have ever been issued for any Alaska salmon or seafood. And, unlike those in other parts of the world, no Alaska salmon stocks are threatened or endangered. Every aspect of Alaska's salmon fishery is strictly regulated, closely monitored, and rigidly enforced. The fishery serves the native subsistence fishermen as well as the home or restaurant consumer thousands of miles away. It sustains wildlife large and small, protecting and preserving an ecosystem scarcely disturbed since the Earth's last ice age. It promises that Alaska's five species of salmon will always be with us, growing and spawning, coming and going, from stream to sea and back again, as long as there are realms of cold blue water high on the shoulders of Earth to hold them.